Hello and welcome to worship. I'm Karen McElfish, your Arlington District Lay Leader. I'm joined today with several lay members of the Arlington District in leading worship, including our associate lay leaders, Tom Feeney, Robin Lee, and Jean Cross, as well as our bi-district program coordinator, Cynthia Lipinski. We are honored to have this opportunity to join with you today in worship. Today's scripture reading comes from John 1.14. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory. Like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
thank you all for being here today um, to have a conversation together as lay leaders in the Arlington District. Um, we've heard the word, the scripture of John 1, 14, and the flesh, the word became flesh and moved out into the neighborhood. So we're going to talk together today about what that means to us. And I thought I'd turn first to you, Robin, if you would. How do you understand this scripture passage as applying to us as la laity in the conference? Um, the first sentence that I, I read was the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. And uh, just like in the Old Testament, in the wilderness, the tabernacle that housed the God's covenant, which is his word, uh, in tablet was set up among the Israel tribes at the center with all the visual effects of cloud and <laughs> lifting up and down uh, with the, that turns into fire um, at night. Um, and so now this John uh, passage talks about um, how the word became human and uh, moved into our neighbor uh, in flesh. And John 1, uh, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And so we know that um, the word that came, to, came down to us to live with us is Jesus. And that's how the New Testament, that God's presence and his kingdom was experienced by um, Jesus uh, as his life and his teaching to us. And then now, then what about now, um, 2000 years later? <laughs> um, we, the believers are where the spirit took up a residence. Um, and uh, as John 14, 23 says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching with them obey my teaching, my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. The father and the son uh, moving into my life and unpacking all the luggages to settle in. This is an amazing mystery of our faith. Um, how could the Holy One can be in my sinner's heart? Um, and so that God's love, and so nowadays God's love, grace, and mercy, and justice can be experienced um, by others through our hands and feet, um, and, um, and for his name to be glorified. And so that, that's how this, actually, the Old Testament, God's presence, and then Jesus in the New Testament, and then his presence as a spirit in our heart um, Change, uh, transforming our lives and then that all kind of connects and um, yeah so that was I wanted to share on the passage that we That's read. That's wonderful I love the the notion that that we then become the hands and feet the, the flesh that then goes out in the neighborhood right how do we see laity ministering in our neighborhood Tom let me turn it to you what what comes to mind when we think about laity being ministers in our neighborhoods? Uh, one way that we've looked at that is to uh, take a look at your church and the people in it and say, what would be missing if we weren't there? Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, you can see things like at, at Vail, where I'm from, uh, we're in the community with things like our Christmas tree sales that go to uh, feed the hungry. And that's something that we're known for in the community. You can see on next door and things like that when people are looking for Christmas trees, they say come to bail because you turn a tree into food. <laughs> um, there are areas in Southeast that rely on us. There are areas uh, in and around the Northern Virginia area that rely on that. And it's not just what the congregation would miss if the church weren't there, it's the, what the community would miss. And that's one thing that's, that's always struck me. Uh, wh what are you providing and how are you a part of that community? And the other piece of that, that again, really struck me and I 
would like to take original credit for this, but I'd be lying. It was in a sermon that, that I read is where you just live your day-to-day -day life outwardly as a Christian. And that affects how you treat people. The example I heard in the sermon was uh, he was referring to a couple of brothers that ran a bicycle shop. And they made no uh, bones about their faith. And they just, the principles that Jesus gave us just went into the way they treated everybody, their employees, their customers. And it, and it was clear that they were living their faith and in effect, we're in mission every day. Um, and those two things are, are something that really struck me. It's, uh, it's working with the needy. It's also just being a Christian every day in all of your everyday encounters and being known for that. Yeah, sharing God's love. Yes. In those everyday encounters. Jean, how about you? What thoughts do you have on how we as laity are, are in our community? I, I think more broadly, it's, it's how the church tends to be in the community. For generations, we've tended to think of church as the building. And I, I think um, what we need to do is be looking at it as the, the people of the church, the laity and the uh, clerical alike are, are the church. And in order for the church to be in the community, we've got to take that spirit outside of the building. It's got to be active in the community in ways that would be demonstrable uh, in the way that Jesus would have us do those things, whether it's uh, taking care of the homeless, uh, feeding the hungry, uh, championing the downtrodden, uh, all of those things are activities that are, are really important in terms of the church actually being in the community, the church as all of the people that are, are believers and active. Um, at, at my church, uh, we have had an active ministry for feeding the homeless and connecting uh, those people with housing. Uh, with organizations we work with, we've gotten probably 400 people into housing now that otherwise uh, would be still on the street. Um, but as we get ready to move and rebuild our building, uh, we're now reaching out in uh, food redistribution uh, pathways and feeding more and more people. Uh, we're actively helping with uh, about feeding 3,500 people a week through uh, connections with the Food Assistance Center and uh, with the uh, shelter. And we're doing that with uh, other uh, nonprofits because the the thing that the church provides is an opportunity for people to be connected. And we all have connections that have give us a way to have leverage resources. Uh, this morning, I filled my Jeep uh, twice with uh, food from Target that is now down at the Food Assistance Center. And uh, there's uh, just a huge quantity of meat and other things that would be otherwise go to waste. So it's, it's a way of demonstrating use of natural resources and resources and leverage and opportunities that, that all of us have ways to connect to. I love that, the connections, the, the ways that we work together in partnership. Cynthia, how do you see laity being in ministry in, in unique fashions? How is, how is what we as laity can, doing in ministry unique? So I think that um, the, the what I love about laity is that we're not trained. Right? When we are in relationship with people, it's not our job, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's, 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 um, there's just a level playing field, right? When we're talking, it's not, some, it's not a clergy person who's been trained and is the special person that can talk for God or work on God's behalf, right? So when we talk to people about God or we say we're going to pray for people, it's, we're, we're no different than the person we're talking to, right? We have no further training than they do. We just happen to have a relationship that's you know, maybe a little further along or a little deeper, you know? Um, I just think that being, um, the relationship that we can have is different than the relationship that clergy can have with people. And I think we have to remember that there's a, there's a gift in both what clergy can do in their relationships and in what we as laity can do. Um, 
So I think sometimes we can have conversations that people would be afraid to have with their pastor, right? Um, and we can, we can go places and do things that, um, you know, maybe clergy can't. So I think we have to remember that, you know, the, the body of Christ is all of us, right? Yeah. Every bit of it, like Jean was saying, the, you know, the church is, you guys have all mentioned it in one way or shape or form, the church is the body of Christ. It's not the building, right? So we all have our ministry, whether it's, um, you know, like Jean filling up his car with groceries yep. or Tom, you know, working out there with the trees. You know, we all have something we do. It could be, you know, prayer ministry, which could be very, um, you know, um, a quiet time kind of thing, not a lot of people, but you can still develop deep relationships by being in prayer for people. I think there's also the element of seeing our professions as being a form of ministry. I know that when I was a practicing as a pediatrician, that um, I felt that was a call to ministry and, and something that very real that I could do that I wasn't a clergy person, obviously, but that I could share God's love through what I did on a day to day basis. And I think each of us has the, that unique opportunity in what we're doing um, to to share God's love in that unique way. How do we see ministry changing? You know, obviously, we've, we're in the midst of a pandemic. How has ministry changed during the pandemic? And how do we envision it changing post-pandemic? Somebody want to take a stab at that? I can start. I think the, one of the things that I think is going to happen and that we're already seeing it is um, a stronger need to be connected to people. I think we've, we've realized in this last year how much we need community, how much we need each other and how important relationships are. But I think the church has left the building. Um, I think the pandemic forced us all to realize that. And we were, you know, we, instead of expecting people to come to us, we've already started to go to them. And I think that's what we'll hopefully, will continue to do is get out into the community. Gene, you look like you have something you'd like to share on that. Uh, to pick up on what Cynthia is saying, that really the church has left the building. But I think during the pandemic, we all saw a need for connections that we, uh, personal connections that we couldn't have physically and found ways to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was via the Zoom or the team meetings or uh, meet up or whatever the, the situation was, uh, we found a way to maintain personal connections. Uh, I got to watch, uh, go to the movies with my grandkids in Wisconsin that I almost see once a year, maybe. Uh, but we actually go to the movies now together on Saturday nights. So we found different ways to be in connections with people. And I think the church is going to continue evolving around how we do that. I think most congregations are going to find that we are doing both a virtual service and a, uh, a uh, in-person service. I think we'll find that uh, by doing what uh, we're doing with recording services and broadcasting them, uh, church is going to be almost an on-demand function rather than 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Uh, <laughs> We've, uh, I, I know I've had numbers of discussions over the last several years about people have become accustomed to having whatever it is they're looking for on demand, whether it's uh, a, a favorite TV program or a radio program or a podcast or, uh, uh, you know, my, or just the convenience of a cell phone and you know the other person has a phone and you can reach them. You're not leaving a message on a uh, black box someplace and waiting for them to retrieve it. Uh, yeah. So... I think the whole character of church is going to change. Uh, I think the the need is going to be recognized more in some respects. I think people are going to find a need to, to be more connected and they're going to perhaps use that as a vehicle to do that because uh, it's not going to be just going to the gym or whatever where you get connected with your friends. You'll be able to do that in other fashions and uh, with, with other vehicles and for other purposes. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that my husband and I uh, addressed being the church in our neighborhood is we go for walks every day. And, and initially, we intentionally greeted people as we would walk. And it was really fun to watch. Initially, people would, would sometimes greet us 
in return. Sometimes they would just simply walk by. But as the year progressed, a lot of those people would start to greet us first. <laughs> and so clearly we were making those connections and seeing each other and recognizing each other as neighbor. Um, and that was something that were it not for the pandemic, we wouldn't have been doing. We'd have been going our separate ways to do our work and, and that opportunity was, would not have been there. So it was just a small way that we could be uh, in community. And, and Robin, you were describing one that, that you did, <laughs> if you want to share. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I take my dog out for a walk and uh, I started seeing all these um, uncleaned up uh, dog poops. And uh, at first my reaction was, well, let's, I didn't do it. And then it's not my problem. <laughs> uh, but then... I thought, well, it could be my problem because she she started sniffing and you know she may step onto it and I didn't want her to do that and so so then I started cleaning a little bit here and there and then uh, one day I found like these really many piles on one corner grassy side near my neighbor and I was like, oh my, this is too much <laughs> and so and then I was gonna walk away. This is too much. And, um, and then I remembered, um, if you just love your, you know, uh, oh no, if you just, if just love your neighbor, uh, those who love you in return, then how, how are you different from the world? I mean, and so it's basically, you know, something that I did, okay, that's too much in the complaining and then just passing by looking away. That's anybody can do something anybody can do. But so Jesus was challenging me. I need to be different from the world to be to live as his light. So I cleaned up all of that. Um, and then um, so that's basically what Jesus did when he washed the disciples feet. It's the it's a dirty work that nobody else wants to do. And then only, you know, reserved for a slave and the lowly people. And um, I find all these trashes in our neighbor. Uh, and I try to um, pick up. And I think one of my neighbors actually noticed that in my courtyard. And so I saw you picking up trash. <laughs> so they do notice those things that are different from the world. And um, when you get a chance, their hearts may be more open uh, to the, the good news. And so that was the, the real personal level um, challenge that I get to, I have to really leave out my faith that he's teaching. And then I get more and more challenged um, in everyday setting. So, because I used to be all busy going to church and, and I was really spending time in the neighborhood knowing uh, my neighbors. And, and so this was really a great time to get to know my neighbor. And then I would pray, pass by a neighbor who has just finished the chemotherapy. I would pray for that person passing by. So it was prayer walk was another one. And it was really, really um, coming down to the community level is from the church building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And these are all things that I hope we're able to not only continue, but build on as we go forward. So how can we encourage other laity to see themselves as being in ministry? Yes, I, I think that we need to have a very expanded view of, of what it means to be in ministry and in mission. Um, because a lot of people look at that and they think of, proselytizing or going in and, and helping the needy, which is a huge part of what we do. But mission, I think, is, is broader than that. And I think it's publicly leading a Christian life and making it known that you treat other people and you're engaged in the community because you are a Christian and you believe in Christian principles. And that's not something that you do separate and apart from your life. It, it, it becomes a part 
of how you are in your community. And it's kind of not saying that good deeds lead you to God. If you publicly are committed to God, that leads you to everything else that you're supposed to be doing. And I think that's the way every person who's a Christian can be in mission all the time. The quote, um, that more people are gonna read you than they are gonna read the Bible, right? Mm. So they're gonna be looking at you to see what it is, what is this Christian thing? Who is this Jesus guy it's in our life? Yeah. That it's revealed. Yeah, one, uh, one thing I've never forgotten is, is when I retired, um, I had finished to 25 years in my organization. And one person who I had worked very closely with and, and uh, for a number of those years came up and, and, and talked a little. And the one thing that she mentioned out of all the stuff we had worked on together was one Monday after her mother had died, um, I came in and I said, we prayed for your mother at our service yesterday. And out of all the things that we had done together over a career, that's what stuck with her. Wow. So that's what we can do, right? Yeah. We can just be real. Yeah. I think sometimes in being what you are, it leads other people to, to get engaged too. Uh, we've um, had uh, a, a situation happen and we live in a large condo building and a number of people knew of the, the work that we were doing with the, the homeless and whatnot and ask how they could be involved, especially during the pandemic, because there was all of the people out of the work, particularly the restaurant folks. And we knew that the shelter was running short on um, sandwiches and lunches and, and things like that. So all of a sudden, the organization in the building started just showing up with uh, every Thursday night, I guess there's a train of sandwiches lined up outside my front door to be <laughs> hauled, hauled off on Friday morning so that they, they, they get the people in need. And so other people really want to be engaged and they just sometimes need somebody to, mm -hmm. to do it with. They don't yeah. necessarily want to do it alone. You know, it's the uh, pioneers that get the arrows. So and this case, it's uh, if you set, you know step forward and try and be the engineer on the train, it moves it along faster. Well, I want to thank you all for taking time today to share how you see us um, being in ministry and wonderful thoughts that we can share as we are at the hands and feet of Christ. So may we go forward and continue to serve in all the many ways that we do. Thank you all. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear this prayer from Bobby Shapercater. Father God, we know that you call us to love others as you have loved us. You task us with the holy job of caring for all those around us, including those who have been marginalized, hurt, oppressed, overlooked, taken advantage of, and ignored. Give us eyes to see and a heart that feels compassion. Help us to be the kind of neighbor that you call us to be. Help us to never elevate ourselves above someone else or to do harm to another. Instead, help us to be trustworthy, inclusive, caring, encouraging, and generous. Root out any hatred that may be in our hearts and replace in it the goodness, mercy, grace, and love that we have learned through your example. Remind us that we are not called to be judges, but to be witnesses who lovingly point others to you through our words, deeds, and actions. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen.